Right now on CBS2, drama in a California court as Michael Jackson's accuser stares down the king of pop. And a police officer stabbed in the line of duty in Manhattan. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ernie Anastas. I'm Roz Abrams. We begin tonight on the west side where a police officer is recovering after a frightening attack. Well, it happened during a buy and bust operation. That officer is now at St. Luke's Roosevelt Hospital. And that's where Brendan Keefe is live with breaking details for us. Brendan. That's right, Ernie. The officer, we are told, is conscious and in stable condition despite being stabbed three times, twice in the chest, once in the stomach, and two suspects are in custody, one a 13-year-old boy. The undercover officer was trying to buy crack from dealers in the lobby of 50 Amsterdam, a housing project right behind Lincoln Center, when one of them pulled out a knife. Undercover New York City police officer was stabbed three times, twice in the chest and once in the abdomen. The officer was not wearing a protective vest. His backup team moved in and arrested the two teen suspects while his partner drove the wounded officer to the hospital. The assailant is identified as a 19-year-old, Bajuli Felice. His accomplice is a 13-year-old who resides in the Amsterdam houses. The motive for the stabbing was an argument over the quality of the drugs. The undercover officer survived only because the knife missed all of his vital organs. Tonight, on the anniversary of the slayings of detectives Jay Andrews and James Nimrin, we're reminded once again just how dangerous police work can be. The police commissioner speculates the reason this undercover officer wasn't wearing a protective vest is because that would have tipped off the perpetrators that he was a police officer. We're live at St. Luke's Roosevelt. Brendan Keefe, CBS 2 News. Ross. Thank you, Brendan. The boy who was accusing Michael Jackson of molesting him took the stand against the pop star today. Brian Andrews of CBS station KFOR, live in Santa Maria, California, with today's developments. Brian. Hi, Roz. Michael Jackson and the accuser sat just yards away from each other in court, and Michael Jackson listened as this young man talked about how he met the pop star who showed him online porn and told him to paint a rosy picture of their relationship for a British documentary producer. Sheriff's deputies fool the media as cameras focus on the courthouse exit to get a shot of the accuser leaving for the day. They instead get two detectives throwing their coats in the back seat and driving off, the team taking out another exit. I'm sorry. I'm under, I'm under gag order. I'm sorry. No comment from Michael Jackson about his accuser's afternoon on the witness stand. The young man said he used to think the pop star was the coolest guy in the world. He testified that on his first night at Neverland, he saw internet porn in Jackson's bedroom. And he testified about this interview he gave to Martin Bashir with Michael Jackson, saying before it was taped, Jackson pulled him aside and said, you want to be in movies? Consider this interview his audition. Tell Bashir that you call me dad or daddy Michael, that I helped you and that I cured you of cancer. You get a sense that he was almost used as a prop by Michael Jackson. That's the implication, certainly, of the early testimony. This young man is expected to have his testimony continue all day long and stretch into next week. No testimony scheduled for court on Friday. The judge will be hearing motions. We're live in Santa Maria, California. I'm Brian Andrews, CBS 2 News. Ernie? Brian, thank you very much. Uh, CBS 2 exclusive tonight. An accused mobster finds himself on the defense this week. His alleged crime caught on tape. And one of the people helping to put him away is no stranger to the spotlight himself. Lou Young is live in downtown Brooklyn with a story. Lou? Yeah, Ernie, former tough guys flip for the feds, and now a decade-old crime comes back to haunt an Irish kid from Staten Island who ran with the bad boys back then, and the crime was caught on tape. Take a look. It was their million-dollar baby, a bank job in Bay Ridge 11 years ago, and the feds say one of the masked men who burst out of the boiler room binding employees with duct tape was none other than the guy on trial here this week in Brooklyn Federal Court, Eddie Boyle, reputed Gambino associate and alleged member of a loose-knit Staten Island crew that knocked over dozens of banks in two boroughs during the 1990s. Boyle has been fingered by the most glamorous mob turncoat currently singing in the federal courts. Chris Pacello, a guy who took his cut of the 1994 Brooklyn bank job and used the money to become the so-called club king of South Miami Beach. He's been linked with supermodels and singers, including Madonna, and even went into business with Madonna's friend Ingrid Ciceras. Pacello's in prison now and is one of three mob turncoats testifying against Boyle, people. whose lawyer These told me tonight people. the feds are and reaching. As they say, the government made a deal with the devil here. They'll, they'll take the testimony because it's what they want to hear, and these guys are happy to say whatever the government wants to hear. And how do you characterize your client? He's not a Boy Scout, but he did not do anywhere near the things they say he did, and he certainly didn't do the National Westminster bank robbery. 
That's the bank branch in uh, Bay Ridge that was uh, knocked over. But Cello is in uh, federal prison serving uh, seven years for uh, planning a home invasion on Staten Island uh, in which a woman died. Uh, another mob turncoat, uh, Gerald uh, Bellafiore, nicknamed Skeevy or Scissorhands, is currently on the stand here uh, making his case against Boyle. Uh, asked if he could remember uh, how many crimes he committed. Uh, he said uh, no, too many to count. Asked if he committed violent crimes. He looked up and he said, uh, define violent. We're live at the federal court in Brooklyn. Lou Young, CBS 2 News. Thank you very much, Lou. And dozens of alleged Gambino family mobsters were busted today. An undercover FBI sting operation netted 32 suspects. The feds say that an agent worked his way into the Gambino crime family for two years, getting so close to the suspects that he was almost inducted into the family. The agent secretly taped hundreds of conversations. The suspects face a slew of charges, including racketeering and assault. Ernie, a chilling 911 call for the first time tonight. We hear the call for help from a worker caught in a major explosion in a New Jersey pet store. Oh, come on, please. Oh. A desperate cry from 34-year-old Jennifer Rowan. She was one of five Petco employees trapped under mounds of debris after the gas explosion in Eatontown Friday. Rowan managed to call 911. Okay, ma'am. Jennifer. Jennifer, stay right I'm with gonna us. Die. All right, we're not going to let that happen. Stay in the line with me, okay? <laughs> Monmouth County Sheriff's Deputy 911 Operator Anthony Solano took her call. She wanted to call her loved ones and say goodbye. I just tried to keep her on the line, just tell her, you know what, they know where you're at. You just got to be patient and let them, let them get there. Solano helped guide rescuers to her location. Okay, they're getting me out. Rohan is still hospitalized in critical condition tonight. It was a story that CBS2 first brought you, and tonight two cadets at a prestigious military academy faced charges that they viciously assaulted a classmate on a regular basis. CBS2's Arthur Chien has the story from Cornwall in upstate New York. New York Military Academy cadets Ishmael Khan of Queens and Joseph Osterberg of Connecticut were arraigned tonight on charges. They dished out daily beatings of a freshman cadet, twice landing the alleged victim in the hospital. The attorney for Cadet Sawyer says the academy tolerates hazing. Initially, he was told by these defendants, you know, these uh, student officers at the military academy, that he would be killed if he disclosed anything uh, to officials. It is the second time in as many years the military academy has been accused of institutionalized hazing. An academy official tonight read a brief statement. NEMA has a no-tolerance policy toward violence, bullying, and hazing. While neither of the defendants would appear on camera, an attorney for Cadet Khan said whatever was going on at the academy, his client was not the ringleader. Meanwhile, since CBS reported on this story first last month, the dynamic of this case may have changed. Since CBS broke the story about a month ago, there's been nothing short of an avalanche of additional individuals who've come forward. What impact it will have on the $13 million civil suit filed by Cadet Sawyer remains to be seen. In Cornwall, Arthur Chien, CBS 2 News. New York Giants officials say only a miracle can help them get a new stadium in New Jersey. A proposed deal all but fell apart today. The Giants are angry over new state demands, especially one which allows future governors the right to collect taxes from luxury boxes and ticket sales. Acting Governor Richard Cody said today he is, however, still optimistic that a deal can be reached. Former President Bill Clinton hit the links today, a day before having surgery. months ago. There's nothing wrong with me except I have a fluid buildup between my ribs and my uh, lung and it constricts my breathing. And doctors at New York Presbyterian Hospital Columbia University Medical Center will perform tomorrow's procedure. Still ahead it was a sight many music fans thought that they would never see and it happened today in Harlem. We've got the story. And are you really covered when it comes to health insurance? See why some people are getting ripped off for thousands of dollars could it happen to you? And it is the end of a long and distinguished career in the anchor chair for a broadcast pioneer. We are back in 60 seconds. A legend in television news is ending his reign after 24 years at the CBS News anchor desk. Dan Rather signed off for the last time tonight. And CBS correspondent Drew Levinson has mourned tonight's emotional goodbye.
We Dan did. Rather waited until the end of Wednesday's broadcast to say goodbye. And before I say goodnight this night, I need to say thank you. For 24 years, he was the face of the network. Good afternoon, Dan Rather, CBS News with Newsbreak. Rather always considered himself more of a reporter than anchor, bringing us the news from just about everywhere. This is what it looks like when the wind is gusting 144 miles an hour. And is less than 30 yards from the main gate of the main pagoda here at Da Nang. These Afghan clothes I'm wearing were part of an operation to sneak me and a CBS News film crew into Afghanistan. September 11th. 2001. You will remember this day as long as you live. He cherished his exclusives, especially the two with Saddam Hussein. Rather, steadfastly denies claims of liberal bias, but conservatives say their strongest evidence came when he reported on President George Bush's National Guard record. Documents used in that story could not be authenticated, and an independent panel deemed CBS News sloppy. One producer was fired, three others were asked to resign. Journalism professor Richard Wald says it's unfortunate to judge Rather's legacy by the Bush National Guard story. Dan accumulated a lot of static in the course of his career. It all came down in a lightning bolt over that one error. Rather will also be remembered for what has come to be known as Ratherism. Kerry's rapidly reaching the point where he's got it back to the wall, his short tail's on fire, and the bill collector's at the door. And Dan Rather has left the desk. For the CBS Evening News, Dan Rather reporting. Good night. And he's also left an indelible mark. <laughs> Rather has no plans to leave CBS News. He's moving over to be a full-time correspondent for 60 Minutes. Drew Levinson, CBS News, New York. And, and we that's wish, good news. It sure is, and we certainly wish Dan all of the very best in all of his new endeavors. Still ahead for you tonight, what a scene in Manhattan as one of New York's bravest takes a big step on the road to recovery. We'll have his story. And how not to be a victim of one of the biggest and most expensive health insurance scams out there. Hey, I'm John Belarus. Winds finally easing tonight, but could we see another storm system? We'll have the very latest, all the latest information just coming in. We can like that. Closed caption is brought to you by Toyota. Choose any direction as long as it's moving you forward. I never, never, never became a teacher to get rich. I'm here because I want to help kids. But our classrooms are overcrowded. Our schools are underfunded. Suburban teachers make 15% more than we do. I'm just asking that educating our kids be as high a priority as building a pro football stadium. I don't think that's asking too much. Do you? flexible at Sprint because our old wireless company charges huge fees for going over our minutes on our plan. So if mom called, you think, is it worth it? Is, it, is a 20-minute conversation about what her cat did today worth it? I mean, it's a cat. <laughs> Which is why you switched. Yes. No more huge overages. Sprint automatically adds any time minutes as you need them. Every 100 minutes cost just $5. Others charge 35 or more. Sprint PCS. Now that's better. Yeah! Live on Broadway, The Lion King. See it now. Hey, Dad, did you know Kraft American Singles have double the calcium and many other American slices to help me have strong bones and teeth when I grow up? Just don't grow up too fast. Kraft American Singles, double the calcium, now with vitamin D. Five-star crash safety rated Civic Coupe from Honda.
We have a warning tonight about an insurance scam so widespread it's leaving hundreds of thousands of unsuspecting Americans with millions of dollars in unpaid bills. And they are hit at a time when they are most vulnerable. How can you protect yourself from this coverage con? Here's Kirsten Cole. Gwen Carter thought she had health insurance through her husband's employer until she got sick. I had vertigo, ringing in the ears, migraines. Turns out Gwen was suffering from multiple sclerosis and soon had thousands in medical bills. Problem was her insurer made one and only one payment. The rest of them went unpaid. On top of the stress of this new illness, Gwen now had a financial fiasco on her hands. That set um, another stress mark over and above what I needed at that time. Gwen fell victim to what officials call one of the largest insurance scams today. Unlicensed companies posing as insurers that pocket premiums but fail to pay most claims. The policies themselves are counterfeit. They look like, they sound like an ordinary insurance contract. And the companies sound legitimate with names like Employers Mutual and TRG Marketing. But experts say that's where the coverage ends. We have seen the incidence of phony insurance policies rise by approximately 100 percent. So the problem is absolutely enormous. In fact, the most recent government investigation finds more than 200,000 consumers left with $252 million in unpaid claims over just a two-year period. The people who perpetuate these plans are predators. The Department of Labor says it currently has more than 100 open investigations and is working to shut down these bogus companies. But advocates say you have a job to do too. The best cure is a large dose of prevention. The Coalition Against Insurance Fraud says there are ways to protect yourself. Be wary of a policy if it's priced too low, has an easy sign up despite a pre existing condition, and offers overly generous benefits. And most important, call your state's insurance commission to confirm the policy is legitimate. Gwen checked before signing up for her new policy and says she'll never be blindsided again. According to insurance officials, these fraudulent companies generally start off by actually paying a small claim to throw clients off. Then they continue to pocket premiums until they get nabbed for not paying larger claims. As for Gwen, her lawsuit against the insurer is now playing out in court, and she still doesn't know if she'll be liable for all her unpaid medical bills. I'm Kirsten Cole, CBS 2 News. Well, the winds mercifully have died down, but uh, maybe it yes, is still have. cold it's out there. It's still cold out there, but the winds have died down, and that's yeah. the thing that really gets you. And uh, we have no wind in the forecast for your Thursday. All right, let's check out some cold people. Yeah, look at this. Ooh, colorful scarf right there. Looks very pretty. Ooh, look at that scarf right there. Hmm, I like the first one. Let's see. Oh, look at that red one right there. Oh, scarfing up the activity there in Times Square. Look, do we have another one? All right. That was kind of nice. All right. So far this year, we've had 38 and a half inches of snow. This time last year, we had a, a little bit less than that. So it's been a snowy season. Don't forget the average for the entire winter season is a little over 22 inches. So we're above the norm and we're going to add on to it. 2002, we had 49.3. 2003, 42.6. This year, if we hit 40 plus, it'll be the first time three consecutive Seasonal snowfalls of 40 or above, first time ever in recorded weather history right here in New York City. Aren't we lucky? High today, 31. Low came in at 16. Normal high should be 47. Your normal low should be 33. Uh, it's all messed up. Record high, 75. Out there right now, it's March Madness. Central Park, 27 degrees with the wind subsiding. Newburgh, 16. Go across the island. Say hello to Bohemia, 21. Brooklyn, 25. Bridgeport, 23. 17 in Poughkeepsie, White Plains, 20 degrees, sunshine. But thank goodness the wind will not be a factor for your Thursday. It will actually feel good. Friday, here we go. First bout of snow, but it will be light snow. Friday, some light snow, temperatures in the mid-30s. Not a big storm system, but could be a light accumulation. Not much. And then after that system goes by, Models, computer models still trying to put together a storm, but it's going to be too late. This energy will not meet this energy, so it's kind of separated, and that's good. You want to keep them separated because if they come together, they bomb out. They're going to stay separated. That means we just get a little backwash on Saturday in the form of some light snow or flurries. Better chance of a steadier light snow across eastern Long Island. What else is new this winter season? Clear and frigid tonight, icy patches, 
20 in town, 8 to 16. Inland sunshine cold. No wind for your Thursday around 36, 37 degrees. Friday, some light snow, little accumulation there. Saturday, some light snow. Storm heads east. Best chance of seeing some steady light snow will be across eastern Suffolk County, eastern Connecticut. Sunday, clouds, flurries, 35, just too cold. Hmm. Ooh, the Tran real quick. Tran, as we, we have to go to the Tran because yes. the last day of winter is yes. March 19th. Oh. That's some good news. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> good man, John. Yeah, All right. right, when we come back, a truce in the rap reports. Details next. Top rappers 50 Cent and The Game say they are ending their feud in the wake of last week's shooting. The hip-hop stars embraced in Harlem today. The two were linked to a shooting outside the headquarters of radio station Hot 97. I just want to apologize on behalf of myself, 50 Cent, and uh, to the fans, the uh, radio stations, our labels. Together we can put negativity behind us. Resolved, however, Hot 97's landlord wants to limit the station's visitors because other tenants are afraid of the rap groups entering the building. Well, a firefighter injured in a jump from a burning building is finally out of the hospital. Well-wishers applauded Joseph DiBernardo Jr. as he was wheeled out of the New York Presbyterian Hospital while Cornell Medical Center. Three other firefighters who jumped with him were injured and two were killed. A brother fireman came over to me and asked me if it was okay, and I told him, he asked me who I was. I said, it's Joey D from Rescue 3, and I said, everything from my waist down feels like a bag of broken glass. DiBernardo still faces some rehab, but he promised to dance at his sister's wedding six months from today. I'm sure he will. More fallout from the steroid scandal. The surprising details coming up next. The bank that can't get its numbers right. Thursday at 11, he wrote a check for 500 bucks. The bank cashed it for 5,000. Hey, doesn't someone owe him a refund? I still do not have my money. See who Arnold Diaz deposits into the Hall of Shame. Thursday on CBS 2 News at 11. There's a new way to beat that morning commute. It's a technological breakthrough. Beep, beep. Giving you exact speeds, travel times, and delays on major commuter routes. With new point-to-point -point traffic reports from the two crew. Weekday mornings, 5 to 7. The 2005 Chevy Trailblazer and the 7-passenger EXT with XM Radio, OnStar, and Moonroof. Trailblazer. It's sure to steal the show. Now get this Trailblazer LS four-wheel drive for around $2.99 a month with Smart Buy Financing. Residency restrictions apply. Call for important details. to sleeping in your own bed for a change. Enjoy your flight. And remember to book your travel at AA.com, where you always get our lowest fares guaranteed. We know why you fly. We're American Airlines. Deuces is here with more baseball tonight. Government getting involved with uh, the steroid controversy. When Congress calls, you listen, especially when subpoenas are involved. Several current and former baseball players have been ordered to appear before a congressional committee investigating steroid use in baseball. The hearing will be held March 17th. An all-star list of names, Jason Giambi, Jose Canseco, Mark McGuire, Kurt Schilling, Sammy Sosa, Rafael Palmero, and Frank Thomas. 
Major League Baseball executives have also been subpoenaed. The committee also wants to see records of baseball's drug tests. MLB plans to fight the order to appear. This may end up in court. Mother Nature is not a baseball fan, not today at least. Both the Yankees and Mets spring training games rained out in Florida. Also, Mike Cameron has told the Mets he no longer desires a trade. Nets and Hornets in overtime. P.J. Brown hits a jumper to give the Hornets a one-point lead with 16 seconds left. Seconds remaining at the other end. Jason Collins is blocked. Jason Kidd tracks down the loose ball. Three-point play. The Nets lead by two. But after Kidd fouls J.R. Smith attempting a three, he gets three free throw attempts. He needs to make two to tie. The rookie misses the first two. And the Nets win 86-85 to snap a three-game skid. The Big East tournament is underway. If Rutgers hopes to make the big dance, it needs to win this tourney. Same goes for Seton Hall. Seton Hall and Georgetown. Pirates with the ball, building on a lead. John Allen's three puts Seton Hall up by eight. But the Hoyas go on a 12-0 run. Darrell Owens catches fire. Georgetown up by one. Now three-point Hoyas lead seconds to go. Donald Copeland will not be the hero tonight. Seton Hall falls short 56-51. It's just a tough game, and, and uh, you know, it kind of epitomized a little bit of the, the season. It's the same thing that's been happening the whole season. You know, it's nothing, it's nothing different from the whole season. We lost. Rutgers and Notre Dame in the night capper. Scarlet Knights up by one. Ricky Shields, sticky fingers. He also has the speed to beat the pack. Rutgers upsets Notre Dame. 72-65. Stick around after the break. The Jets' newest receiver, who's their old receiver, talks about his return. They say once a new car leaves the dealership, it starts to lose money. There's one car, however, that keeps its value far better than others. And if that's something that appeals to you, the Honda Civic is your kind of car. Now you can lease a new Civic value package for $159 a month. There's a lady who graces the harbor, crafted in Europe, designed for New York, and built for fun. Welcome aboard Norwegian Dawn, sailing year-round from her hometown of New York. Now, for seven days, the beaches and shopping in the Bahamas, a private island paradise, exciting Miami, and the theme parks of Orlando are right outside your door. Norwegian Dawn, catch a cab to the harbor and you'll be in paradise before you know it. Morning, James. Ah, uh, does it. I'm <clears throat> putting a contact lens in my eye, and uh, without my hands, it's more hygienic that way. I read about it in a magazine. Works excellent. It's wonderful. All right, I'm ready for the sales. I'm all over the sales report. Thank you. Thanks very much. I look. Okay, Bob. Bad poker face. Doesn't matter when you play online at PartyPoker.net. It's fun. It's free. It's the world's largest poker school. Other eye. An easy way to experiment with color before you paint? Benjamin Moore calls them color samples. I call them color selection simplified. With 260 designer colors, it was easy to go from here to my wall, where I could see each color big as life, day and night. Color samples are available only at your local Benjamin Moore store, where you get the expert advice and personalized attention you can't get at a warehouse home center. Thanks to Benjamin Moore, I found the perfect color. Color samples, only at your local Benjamin Moore store. The Ford Focus drives great. Performance-tuned suspension, a new, more powerful engine. Yes, yeah, sell it, Jesse. Great gas mileage, a ton of room. This lady knows her stuff. All backed with a powertrain coverage for five years or 100,000 miles. Here comes the big finish. For a limited time, you get a Dell Dimension PC with a flat panel monitor and all-in-one printer at no extra charge. Bingo! Get into a new Focus ZX3 for just $179 a month. Visit your Tri-State Quality Ford store today. Wagner one step away from the NCAA tournament appearance. The final obstacle, Fairleigh Dickinson in the NEC tourney final. First half action. Clear the one runway. FDU's Andrea Corsario. Ali oop, he loves the camera. Game tied early. Close your mouth. Second half, more FDU. Mensa Peterson, key three late. FDU ends Wagner's dream. 58-52. High school, Zavarian and Rice. Zavarian looking for its first Catholic City title. Rice's Curtis Kelly finds Joe Vines. Rice, nine-point lead in the third quarter. Fourth quarter, the Zavarian Clippers rise to the occasion. Jake Stevens, he gives them a one-point lead. 
Shaquan Stone breaking ankles with this move. The Zavarian Clippers are the city champs, 67-66, the final over Rice. Don't want to be at the bottom of that pile. The Giants met with Plaxico Burris today. They wind and dine the free agent receiver. The team will meet with him again tomorrow. Meanwhile, the Jets welcome their new wideout, Lavernius Coles. He is back. Coles passed his physical today to make the trade official. I'm here. I'm going to be here this offseason working hard, trying to prepare myself for a great season uh, to help my teammates in any way possible. And, that, and that's what I'm here. I'm just a piece of the puzzle, and hopefully I can come in, fit in, and help everybody else out. And that is a look at sports. Very well. Thank you, Deuces. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you all for joining us. I'm Roz Abrams. I'm Ernie Anastas. The Late Show with David Letterman's coming up next with Paris Hilton. Paris. Yeah. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.